Hello everybody, this is a video I'm doing on the STR-DE935 Sony uh, surround sound receiver. Uh, this is actually uh, doing the beginning of the video after I've fixed everything. Because I want to tell you about uh, what this video is about and uh, if it applies to you. Number one was the speaker selector switch had been punched in and so that needed to be fixed. Number two is the speaker impedance switch that is back here. Uh, that had just basically fallen apart internally and fell down inside the machine. And then last but not least and probably what will apply to most of you is you may be looking for, you have your Sony receiver and it's no longer making sound. Now on this I actually found what causes that problem on this receiver though it wasn't bad enough at this point for the receiver to actually fail. Though I never plugged it in until after I had everything fixed because I didn't want to blow anything out obviously. Um, but I will break the video up into chapters so if you need to you can look up the chapter that applies to you or you can watch the other parts for entertainment value don't know how many people will need to fix the speaker selector switch but the impedance switch judging by how it was made I would think that uh, uh, an awful lot of them would fail and the bigger problem is no sound from your receiver which is um, uh, one particular um, amplifier chip uh, starts to uh, lose its connection at the solder joints. So um, let's get started on the video. Okay, now on my bench is a Sony STRDE935, 110 watts per channel. Uh, surround sound receiver, older model. Uh, picked it up for 10 bucks. And because it has two problems, it's uh, speaker selection switch is punched in. And go around back, I'll show you the other problem, which is probably common. And the second problem is the speaker impedance switch has fallen apart. It actually was already in there, so I've actually uh, disconnected the mount. And what I have bought, okay, now take it apart. Take the top cover off, two screws each end, two screws in the back, and lift it off. Okay, so here's the board for the speaker impedance switch that's broken. And that was mounted on there, and then two screws hold it to the back. And basically, just from age and the weight and tension of these wires on the unit, four little plastic clips on there give way there's only one left there holding it on and this breaks off I suspect this is probably a common issue with any models that have this impedance selector switch and my solution was to use a voltage selector switch which the screw spacing is just a little bit off maybe I'll just widen one of the holes with a drill uh, to get that to fit in there, I uh, got on eBay a bag of five of them for like eight bucks from China. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this board away. Just have to bend these tabs in just a little bit because the tabs on this line up pretty close. And uh, it did say 110, 120 volts inside there. I just used a little bit of. Um, acetone nail polish remover picked it up at Walmart on a q-tip and those markings wiped right off so nobody would get confused as far as that being a voltage selector switch um, should be a pretty easy fix so let me do that first okay that wasn't too bad I uh, used this uh, if you're not familiar with these this is these are great for cleaning contacts. It's like uh, glass fibers all bunched up and I cleaned off the uh, metal contacts there and then used some 
soldering paste here is uh, the keg brand there's people who make deoxit um, cannot not recommend this product more this is my first time using this uh, just because the plunger does not snap in and once you push on that plunger this thing's pressurizing you can take that plunger out and this stuff just keeps oozing out and oozing out I have to take my pick tool and uh, grab that plunger and pull it out stay away from this one it, it's really it's a headache uh, but anyway on to other headaches uh, the lower set of contacts you will find that as you're trying to solder it to the switch they come unsoldered down here just because they're so big they act as a heat sink and they transfer that heat right down there I should have foresaw that so in the end I unsoldered those lower ones and soldered them onto the lugs separately and then snapped them into place um, with the upper lugs over top of these contacts and then soldered them into place and then I went on the underside and I reflowed each one of these because as you're working on these and bending them around you will feel them coming loose uh, down here uh, just be careful that you don't wind up breaking the um, you know the contact with the, the metal tracings Now I went on eBay and I can buy a board, this assembly, for like 20 bucks and just pop it in. The reason why I decided not to, besides you know, the fact that this is so old that it's not worth investing a whole lot of money into, but also this switch is much more solid. I have more confidence in this thing lasting over a 20 year old um, original switch bought on eBay you know that could just turn around a break shortly after installing so that's why I, I thought this was the better option okay be ready you're gonna have uh, two little tabs here that you're gonna want to bend down uh, a little difficult I had to undo this board which of course this board won't come out because that heat sinks in the way but you undo the five screws across the back and that will give you enough room to shimmy down through that gap there and uh, punch them down okay so even though I bent those tabs down I had to take a file and file notch right there and right there because those tabs just kept getting in the way and what I have now Oh, and I drilled out the holes with a 5 30 seconds drill bit and just elongated them inward just a tiny bit. And the screws, I don't know what size they are, but what I found was this, my, I had some screws from an old computer hard drive and they fit in there perfectly and they have a wide head. I was going to use the other screws with a washer but these have a the flange on the bottom so they'll fit nicely in there and I'm going to put a little touch I think I'll put a little touch of um, thread locker on there. Okay so now here's a look at the finished impedance switch and 8 ohms and 4 ohms and if you didn't know better you would never know that that was not original. That turned out looking real nice. Not that anybody's going to see it. it's on the back anyway. Uh, but it's what I was shooting for a nice, clean, finished appearance. So now on to the speaker selector switch. Okay, to take the front off, just got to remove the volume control knob and then three screws on top. Three screws on the bottom, and then the two hidden behind the volume control knob. And after that, the front just slides right off, and this ribbon cable, you can just pull that right out of its socket, and the complete control panel comes free. Okay, to remove this panel here, just remove the screws. They are a different size from uh, what holds the front panel on, so keep the screws separate. Don't mix them up. Okay, then after that, there's 
Um, several little spring clips poking through the holes there. You just got to push back on them and work your way across the board. And also here and here it plugs into the board that's below so you'll have to pull them up. Then it's just a matter of getting past these pins. And as always, whenever you're looking at a circuit board, check it out. And I found some uh, bad solder joints that I'm going to refloat down here and down here. And I'll exam, examine everywhere. If you need to free it up farther, you can undo that connector right there. And there's one, I think, on the other underside of the board for this little display light. Now, I had already removed the um, power switch, speaker selector switch for repair previously, but that right there plugs into the board right here. Okay, I started gluing my front panel speaker selector switch board. That's your on off power switch right there gluing it together and I just used epoxy and I use I have a couple of these clips I clipped it together and I'm going to continue on uh, gluing in the other parts that I do have okay, my speaker selection switch and power switch assembly board is finished now you see I wound up I put additional bracing across here uh, the cracks not necessary, but just to be safe, epoxy that in. All that is is a, an old terminal strip that I had, so I broke the tabs, uh, broke the tabs out of it. Same with the piece over here. Actually, this whole section here was missing, so put that in as reinforcement for that screw, and uh, that's a little piece of the board from that. Uh, uh, the impedance selector switch that was broken in the back just to go over those cracks to be safe um, and then I followed the broken tr the traces that were broken followed them around and reran uh, jumper wires uh, there were convenient uh, solder tabs along the route so I just tapped into those and uh, I'm going to put some liquid electrical tape on these wires just to hold them down in place so there's no movement and it's ready to go back in. Okay, got my board in place and obviously you won't be able to see any of that. And once again, I could have taken some blank PCB board and made a new board, uh, but that would have entailed unsoldering all the components, piecing all the pieces back together anyway, laying it on top of the board and then drilling through every single hole and then soldering on the new connectors and then hoping I got it all perfectly. Most critically, this connector here which has the connector for the other board next to it to patch in, um, if that's cockeyed then you're kind of SOL. So there's six of one, half a dozen of the other. This was a little bit of work. Basically I take 10 minutes, 5 minutes, whatever, glue pieces together. Next day, add some more pieces until it was all done. And of course, I put the supports on there. But this should work out fine, and you'll never see it. Okay, it's all reassembled. Uh, just to warn you, before you put your four screws back in, you got a connector there, connector there, connector there connector there that goes down to the boards that are underneath the main board. This one over here didn't want to line up for me so before you go forcing anything to snap it down just make sure all those are seated. I wound up loosening up this board a little bit and jogging it about a bit until this seated in place. Then all my all my snaps those little square snaps would fit into place and I was able to put and then put the screws in.